Hi, welcome to the Gapster channel. My name is Gabby and today I'm very excited. I've got a lot of goodies here. Uh, we're gonna build together the ultimate streamer DAC. Uh, it's gonna run on the best power supply possible. Uh, ultra capacitor, pure ultra capacitor. These are giant massive ones. Uh, we've got a lot of them here. It's about four, got a dozen all together. And uh, that's gonna power a Raspberry Pi based DAC and we're gonna purify it with a lot of Ian Canada's uh, latest goodies. Uh, also we've got some four transformers from uh, Ivan Biak and lots of parts purchased uh, from here and there. We're gonna build the prototype on a little wooden board and once we happy with it we're gonna transform it into a beautiful case. So uh, this is gonna be a few parts uh, but we're gonna start by uh, today talking about all the different parts we're gonna put together. It's gonna be uh, exciting, so stay with me and let's build it together. For those of you who are thinking, oh, what the hell is he talking about? I'm gonna do this in a simple way so everybody understand uh, what I'm talking about in a simple way so even the beginners can follow this. Uh, as you know, we're trying to convert uh, music from digital to analog. So you're streaming music say from Tidal, Spotify and you want to convert it into an analog way so now you can play it on your speakers. For that we are going to use a Raspberry Pi. So a Raspberry Pi is basically a little computer that you can buy really cheap for like $30 and it actually does stream music. Uh, so we're interested in making, uh, getting this digital signal and making it better because the digital signal that's coming from the Raspberry Pi is a bit noisy because it's like a computer, there's a lot of noise in there. So we want to purify this noise. And so we take this digital sound and we're going to re-clock it and use uh, what we call a FIFO Pi. And so now we're recreating this digital uh, stream into a much better, cleaner uh, digital stream. After that, we want to convert the uh, digital to analog. For that, we're using a couple of uh, digital to analog converters. And uh, we're going to send that small signal that's coming from that conversion into uh, some transformers to make it a little bit louder and now we can send it to an amplifier to make the big sound and play it on our speaker. So that's how we are converting this digital sound to analog sound and making it as clean as possible and as pure as possible. And to power all these things we need to use clean power and to get clean power we can use basically uh, like something, uh, first let's call dirty power is what? Like something like one of those cheap transformer you plug into the wall, they're called switching power supply. This is the worst thing. Next best thing is similar, but it's called linear power supply. It doesn't switch and it's a much nicer uh, power supply. A step from that would be using batteries. A uh, step above that is using small ultra capacitors. But the ultimate step is to use some really big ultra capacitors. And now the power is coming just purely from the ultra capacitor without being even connected anywhere near the grid or the electricity. And that's how you're going to reduce the noise in your system and get the cleanest possible sound. So hopefully that makes things a little bit more understandable so you can carry on with the video and understand what we're actually building. Uh, one disclaimer, please be careful. These things cannot be shorted. These could be very dangerous because they hold a lot of power. So you need to be respectful of what you're doing. So you need to know a little bit about what you're dealing with. So just be careful and uh, do this at your own risk. All right, uh, first things first, uh, all the parts that you see here that we're going to use to build this DAC streamer, I bought with my own money. 
I am not influenced by anybody to tell you any opinions. So if I'm recommending something, it's more because I personally like it. Uh, not because anybody's offered me any incentive or any free goodies or anything whatsoever. So uh, we'll start with the, uh, the whole core of the system is ultra capacitors. Uh, in my last deck, we used batteries and also uh, ultra capacitors to power the DAC, but these were as big as they are, they're not as big as these, and uh, they could not power the DAC on their own, so they have to constantly be fed by constant power. Uh, but if you eliminate the power altogether and let them run purely on ultra capacitor, you even go one further step to reducing any noise in the uh, uh, supply voltage. Uh, so we'll be using a few of those. Uh, these are massive. These are used to power like start an engine. Usually small ones like these could start a car. Uh, big ones like these could start a, a huge truck, of course, for a short period of time. But nevertheless, they can hold a huge amount of power. Uh, may not last very long, but if you're only using small things that don't use much power, these could last a fairly long period, like hours, uh, and, uh, and supply the voltage. Uh, these are capable of 3 volts each, so if you want, let's say, 5 volts, you would uh, put them in series, basically like that, and you would use a control board. These are I sorts from eBay and you can buy them for it. They vary between on which ultra capacitor you have. So for example, if we want five volts, I will be putting two together. This project uh, was not possible without a great guy in Canada who have been uh, building lots of great parts and he's got uh, his hearts that are all into uh, pure audio and improving the DAC system. Uh, so he made the control board to actually control those ultra capacitor. What it does is, so first it will charge them and then once they're fully charged, they start uh, using the power from the ultra capacitor, but this disconnects from them. So now they're running purely on the ultra capacitor. And after a few hours, when they discharge, this will kick in and recharge them within a couple of minutes, and then they're good for a few more hours again. So probably every few hours, you lose uh, the high quality. I mean, not by much because they're still running, but the quality is not as 100%. But it's only for a couple of minutes within a few hours, which is hardly uh, at all noticeable. So uh, this is going to basically uh, control the other capacitors and keep their safety and also uh, make sure they keep uh, constantly charging. The great thing about this is you're not relying on batteries and these could last years compared to batteries could eventually degrade. So this could run 24 seven versus battery eventually they'll drain and you have to stop and recharge them and so forth. Uh, it could take longer time to recharge. So, so yeah, so this is gonna be the power supply. And then we are basically, again, using a Raspberry Pi as a base core. Uh, to do that, we are starting with um, one of the uh, base here, it's called a station Pi. It's just a way to put things together, also made by Incana. I'll be putting links about all these parts below. You can check them out. And if you want to know prices about them, just follow the links and, and you'll find the prices for them. Uh, so the Raspberry Pi pretty much will go, for example, on one side here. And uh, on the other side, we have a, a FIFO Pi, and that's going to basically isolate what we call the dirty side from um, a Raspberry Pi and the noisy part. And once it goes into the FIFO, it's going to reclock the system. Uh, I am using uh, some great clocks here, and the beauty about the system is you can replace the clocks. So it just pops them basically out, put any clocks you want. Uh, they come with generic clocks, but uh, you can upgrade them. I use some Aku silicone clocks here, but uh, you can go for even 
better clocks these are rated really really high so uh, anything better you're going to be spending tons of money and very lots of complexity you're not going to gain a huge amount of uh, of improvement so this is a five that's going to go here after that uh, there is something called the reclock pi that goes on it also by in canada and then we've got basically this is a the it's a the two DAC chips, it's called a dual mono, so separate channel DAC, so it's like two DACs, one for the left, one for the right, they're separated, and they have separate power supplies, and that's going to go on top of that. And then uh, we're using um, what we call four transformers, so the sound from here will be not strong, so we're going to use transformers to amplify the sound rather than using uh, chips which could introduce more noise uh, and these are excellent transformers made uh, by guy uh, Ivan Biak uh, and uh, also on DIY audio and I will put the link uh, below as well uh, we will be powering the dirty side the Raspberry Pi by a uh, basically a regulator, a high quality uh, linear regulator and also we'll be putting uh, uh, some ultra capacitor to further also reduce any uh, voltage. This is not as critical for uh, for the uh, input voltage as much as the FIFO pi. This is where you really need the pure power, su power supply and this is where these ultra capacitors are going to power uh, all these. Uh, we're going to have a whole bunch of them, so they'll be like grouped in a couple here, a couple there, and they're going probably going to need about six or eight of these to actually power the entire deck. Uh, the beauty about the system is there's so many things you can do, and so you don't have to, like, you could use just two of them and power everything that's 3.3 volt, and this will be the 5 volt system, and that is fine. You're probably going to achieve 95% uh, of the uh, improvements, but you can separate some power supply, put a couple of these, and let's say do the, um, the aqua silicon oscillators. Uh, uh, on a separate power supply and, uh, and you might get slightly more improvement in sound. So I'm going to be uh, putting all these together. We're going to put them on a wooden board and because sometimes you know you decide oh I don't want to use this, I'm going to use something else. So you keep pretending you're, this is the size of a case. You keep pretending you're actually building it for real and after a few months, maybe sometimes longer, sometimes a few days, when you're happy with the system you think oh it's working great, I like everything and then you fine tune the layout and you know how to put them in a case and you know it's going to work well so you're not keep sacrificing different cases and building for nothing. So, so uh, in the next episode we're going to start putting things together. So I just want to show you guys uh, uh, the initial part of how this is going to start and uh, uh, Please stay with me. If you like this channel, give me some thumbs up, subscribe because there's going to be lots of exciting news coming up.